<clears throat> hello, hello. Good evening. It's Wednesday. Let's create. We are coming on here tonight for our regular Wednesday night crafting session. Wednesdays we usually do cards. And so today we are going to do that. And we're going to do one that's kind of a little bit exciting. <clears throat> Sorry, I got a little frog in my throat. And um, it's a little bit larger-ish than some of the cards that we generally make. We're going to be making a pull-up accordion card. I don't know if you have seen one of those before or made one of those before, but I'm going to show you how I make one. Hey, Carol, nice to see you're watching. I hope you're feeling a little bit better this evening. Yeah, it's that time of year when everybody's allergies and everything uh, start acting up, right? All the snow is gone and all the dust and stuff starts moving around from last year and then also all the new stuff that's starting to bloom and come out now. So, yes. All right, so we are going to start by making... Um, the first thing that we need for our accordion pull-up card. And I'm going to start with a piece of black cardstock. I'm going to be using the Fresh Paint Paper Pack today. Um, I'm not using any stickers, but I am going to be using the Paper Pack. And also the Picture My Life cards, because I wanted some different patterns in amongst. And I'm also going to be using this little tiny stamp here that looks like a little burst little kind of poof from the Perfectly Imperfect Patterns stamp set. And I will also be using some of the sentiments from the Fresh Paint scrapbooking stamp set. And then I'm actually digging a little deeper into the, into the stamp pile tonight. I'm pulling out this older one that was from the... Um, National Scrapbooking Day last year, and it's Thoughtful Critters. And what I want from here is just the very small little happy birthday. <laughs> just some, I was looking for a, a happy birthday that was just the right size, and this one seemed to fit the bill. So this little happy birthday, and then I'll be using uh, the Super, the Epic, and the Rad from this one. And I will also be using this little burst from here. It's nice when you have stamp set that, sets that you can kind of pick and choose stamps out of and uh, use them to your advantage. I'm also going to be using um, my Circles Thin Cuts because I need the, the two smallest ones for part of the card. What else am I going to be using? I'm going to be using Black Ink and Bluebird Ink. I'm just kind of giving you the rundown. <laughs> Of what we're going to be using. So there, that's kind of, um, kind of it. I, I'm also going to be using a bit of the red adhesive tape for some of the pieces. And I think that's it. We're not using a regular card base today because we're creating this from scratch. So that's exciting. Hello, mom. Nice to see you joining us. So we're going to start with our 8 inch by 12 inch. Let me just double check to make sure I cut it right. Yes, 8 inch by 12 inch cardstock. And what we're going to do first is we're going to line it up on our Versamat. Let me just see. I'm going to line it up at the 2 inch mark here so it's all in the frame. And then we're going to do some scoring. And the reason we're doing some scoring is we have to create that accordion. As the name implies, we're going to be doing some accordion folding. Now, if you have a scoreboard, you can go ahead and use that. We're going to be scoring this piece as a whole, and then we're actually going to cut it apart. And that saves us from having to score individual things over and over and over again. We're just going to do the scoring once, and then we'll do the trimming. <laughs> so what we want to do is we've got 8.5 by 12, so we've got our 12 inch across here. And we're going to score it every two inches. Pretty easy. So we're going to score at two. And then we're going to score at four. And I just line my ruler up across the lines on my Versamat. And then we're going to score at six. 
like that. And then we're going to score at eight. It's almost like I know how to count by twos. Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? <laughs> You're ready for some cheerleading? And then we're going to go to ten. That wasn't part of our cheer, but we're going to go we're going to go to ten. So there we go. We've created now um, six columns of scoring. And we can get rid of our ruler because that's all we needed it for. But now we need to do some trimming. So I'm going to bring in my great big huge always in the way trimmer that I take off my table when I'm crafting because it's always in the way. And now what we want to do is we want to cut this into four two inch strips. So we start out with eight. So we're going to move it here and we're going to cut two inches and then we're going to cut two more inches and then this last piece we're going to cut two inches. <laughs> There's a pattern here. We scored at two inches and we're cutting at two inches because we're making little two by two squares on these strips. Now we're going to accordion fold them. So there we go. We've got all of our strips, four 12 inch strips. And so now we're going to do the accordion fold. So we're going to fold one back. And I like to make sure that it lines up um, top and bottom before I give the crease, just in case my ruler went wonky. And then we're going to, so that one, I'll put it back this way. So the first one we folded back on itself. Now this one we're going to fold it to the front like so. Line it up. Give it a good crease. And then this one we're going to fold to the back. So we're doing mountain folds and valley folds all the way across. And that gives it the accordion name. Imagine that. <laughs> And then the next one we're going to fold forward. Now I chose to use black for my base because it looks nice with the with the fresh paint. Um, black is not always the best one for doing this kind of folding because we have white core. But we also do now sell black core. I just don't have any. So you're going to see the lines where I have creased it because you'll see a little tiny bit of that white core coming out but that really doesn't bother me <laughs> I think it just kind of looks like it's a little bit grungy and uh, and that really works with the fresh paint look so there's our first one done now we're gonna have to do the same for all of these and I was gonna do these ahead of time but I thought no I'll show you the whole process you know <laughs> give you the good the good view of it all okay so we folded that one to the back and now we're folding to the front, lining it all up. And we just keep doing this for all four of these pieces. So how was everybody's day today? What you been up to? How are things going out there? I saw Debbie was watching and her daughter Lydia just started her first job. Well, not her first job, but just started a job um this week and that's super exciting congratulations to Lydia so there's number two we'll stack them up over there and we're gonna just do the same thing we're gonna fold the first one to the back and then to the front looks like my lines were actually pretty good don't seem to be wandering too much you can use the handle of your scissors for the folding or you can use a bone folder there we go. All the way across. This um, particular card design is actually really good for using up little bits of paper. I kind of say that about a lot of cards because, frankly, it is true about most cards. <laughs> but and I'll show you at the end. Oh, well, I'm not going to show you. I'm going to tell you a way that you could make this into a centerpiece. And I had the idea, and then I went looking for the thing that I was going to suggest you use, and I realized it had already gone out in the recycling. <laughs> so I can't actually show you, but I will tell you, because I think this would make a really fun centerpiece, as well as a card. 
and you could totally jazz it up for any occasion. And I think it would just be super fun. So we're just accordion folding. Carol drove into town, got some groceries. <laughs> yeah, I know with the sunshine we've had today, everything was warming up. We had we did groceries today too. We did Instacart and I was hauling the groceries in from out on the porch and my oh my, it was warm out there. It was nice. All right, so now we have gone through all four of the strips. And so now we have all of these lovely strips that sort of remind us of Charlie Brown's uh, shirt, right? Up and down, up and down, three little mountains, okay? So now we want to do a little bit of decorating. So let's take the first of our, actually, you know what? We're just going to line up all of our, our strips like this. So now that we've carefully folded them, we're going to kind of flatten them out a bit so we can do some decorating. And for this, this is where I'm saying that this is good for using up little bits, is because we're going to decorate in these little squares. So the first thing that we have, and this is why I thought about doing some of this ahead, um, we have 20 squares, and this is um, candy apple cardstock, and I have cut this at... Let me see, one and three quarter inch square. So one and three quarter inch square. And we're just going to go ahead and we're going to stick this in the center of all of these squares. And now this is where you're probably going to say, um, now if this wasn't a live video, I could just fast forward through <laughs> this process of adding all of these little squares. But as we're doing it live, you got to watch me do it. <laughs> but that's okay. I already put all the glue adhesive on the back so as not to make you sit here forever. And actually, because we're just cutting squares to decorate these, the process of preparing the cardstock is pretty simple because you just cut a strip and then cut it into squares. So if, although it looks kind of elaborate when it's done, it's not a long process. Now, we're not going to decorate the very last um, square. So we're going to have one, two, three, four, five that we decorate, and then one that we leave blank. Okay? And we're going to move on to the next one. Now, you could, of course, decorate this any way you want. You could have different colored cardstock on every single one. You could have different base um colors and you know you can maybe have two different colors for the strips and alternate them so you know like black and white or red and blue or yellow and green or whatever suits your suits your card and just decorate them up however you want you totally good there's no rule it's just decorating <laughs> and uh, we had a lot of fun at the crop on the weekend, and um, we were doing the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, uh, one each day, and it was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun researching stuff because, of course, um, you know, I remember the 80s, and that's pretty much it. I wasn't around so much for the other ones, but um, <clears throat> it's always fun looking at how things progress. It's kind of like when we do our layout tag and our card tag, you know, when you look at the end about the progression, especially the progression in fashion through the decades and the progression through the um, technology, especially. My kids were kind of looking at some of the stuff as I was going through it. And, and uh, that's one thing that they noticed that the technology really, you know, People who have lived through the, the, all of the 1900s now, if you've gone through that, you're probably not still alive. But can you imagine, you know, being born at, you know, at 1905 and living and seeing all the changes and you live 95 years up to the 2000s? My goodness, quite, quite, um... A progression of events, really, you know. Some good things, some bad things. 
<laughs> it's, it's, I think somebody made the comment, um, was it for the 70s? It was the best of times, it was the worst of times kind of thing, like good times and bad times, because lots of, lots of not so good things happen through the years, but also lots of good things. All right, we're almost there. And then we get to the more exciting bits of adding more things to our card and getting to build it so you can see how it all comes together. This would actually look really cool now that I'm looking at it. If you did it in black and white and did it for like, you know how some people do like a movie night or they watch the, you know, the awards uh, for the movies and TV, I don't know what they're called, uh, the Oscars, I don't know, I'm not up in those things, <laughs> and you could make it look like film strip, wouldn't that be cool, this would also be really cute if you were doing this as a little mini album, you could totally add photos on all of these, you know, if you were doing, you know, the first, um, let me see how many squares. We're going to have 20 squares. So you could do the first 20 months of a kid's life and then add maybe some extra ones down on the bottom. So you get, to, you know, two years or something. Or do the first year but have a couple photos um, mixed in of extra stuff, right? So there is our four strips covered in the red, but now we're going to add some colorful stuff. So I've got some pattern papers. So this is the fun spray painted hearts. And we're going to go ahead and stick these across the top. And I'm keeping them the same order as we go down. Um, but you could mix it up. I mean, they could be all different. You could make it look like a Rubik's Cube. <laughs> the one that's been all mi mix mist mixed up. So these are one and a half inch squares so that they just fit inside. I kind of like, just because I'm just using pattern paper, I'm not um, doing other embellishing because it needs to be fairly flat. I like having a variety of patterns. So that's our first row is with those spray painted hearts. And I'm just going to restart my video because um, it seems to have stalled on me. <laughs> Gotta love technology. I think I have figured out my, um, my laptop, but I didn't want to try and do that tonight. Maybe on Sunday I'll have my laptop so I can watch the video and the comments from there. So now this one is actually one of the Picture My Life cards. It has all the fun little icons on it, the pizzas and the stars and the little mushrooms and the rainbows and the roller, um, we're not roller skates, um, skateboards and all that. So I thought that would be a fun little Picture My Life card to chop up. And I had already used some pieces of my Picture My Life cards, but because these are just little one and a half um, inch squares, even if there's only uh, a three by four piece of a Picture My Life card left, you can still get four squares out of it. How cool is that? And if you haven't used it, then you still have half of a Picture My Life card left of the four by six. If, it, if you used a three by four, you wouldn't have much left <laughs> by the time you chop that out. I think I need to order some more Picture My Life cards. Um, I, guess I can't remember if I ordered an extra set for Julia because Julia is going to be doing an album. And um, so she's going to need some of these because I know these are just right up her alley. How cool are these looking so far? Oh my gosh, so fun. And then I've also got the smiley faces from the Picture My Life cards. I thought they were cute. Now you'll notice I'm going to skip the next row and I'm going to move down because we will add some sentiments going across in the center. So let me just pop down. If you see me putting it in the wrong spot, just shout out in the comments because <laughs> I'm for sure going to put one of these in the wrong spot. I'm going to try and remind myself every time. It helps that I've got them all lined up. 
so to uh, to keep me on track. There we go. And I did the um, tape adhesive on this, but you could certainly use liquid adhesive. I just thought this would be nice and quick while we're doing this live. Just to be able, of course I say nice and quick and then that one doesn't want to come. <laughs> doesn't that always happen to me? I say something so quick and easy and then it, it makes a liar out of me. There we go. And then the last one is also a Picture My Life card, and it's this fun Art Deco one. And I was using this also on that um, one layout I did during the crop of Julia's first day of school. And I went back and checked, it, and it was her grade three year. I couldn't remember when we were doing it live. I was like, it's grade three, grade four, but it was. It was grade three when she was all into the Pokemon and the Pokemon backpack and the Poke or the Pikachu. Pikachu, which is the Pokemon. Pikachu hat, Pikachu backpack. <laughs> she was styling. She's not so much into the Pokemon now. There we go. And the last one. And then we get to play with those stamps that I was telling you about. Alright. This is looking so fun. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm going to scooch these out of the way a little bit because we need to have some space to do our stamping. So again, I've got another four pieces of cardstock. Um, it's just the white daisy. And it's again the same size, the one and a half inch squares. I'm going to grab foam out of one of my stamp sets. They're perfectly imperfect. So again, we're getting the little, little starbursty I'm just going to plop these all right on here. Do, 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 do. All right. And I'm going to grab my Bluebird ink and the little starburst. It's just like a little tiny starburst. And then I need a piece of scrap paper because what I want to do for this is I want to do second generation stamping. And I want to just create like little starbursties as embellishments rather than putting um, rather than putting uh, bulky embellishments. I thought I would embellish with just ink. So there, I'm just creating little triangles of these and I can do them all in different corners. Oops, second generation. So I'm stamping off on scrap paper first and then onto my cardstock. And let's see, put one down there, one up there, one up there, and then maybe one there, and one there. So I'm trying to make them look not all the same. <laughs> and one down there. Okay, so that's that. Excellent. We're done with the Bluebird. And now I'm going to bring in my Intense Black ink. And we're going to do our sentiments. So let me see. Um, so some of these are from the, I said it at the beginning, but I'm going to remind myself, the scrapbooking, fresh paint scrapbooking stamp set. And then the happy birthday is actually one that I got out of the Thoughtful Critters stamp set. So let's go ahead and we're going to ink this up with black. And just make sure I get... Good coverage on that. I'm going to scooch that off to the side because we're done. And I'm just stamping in the middle. Just easy peasy. And then we've also got epic. Epic. There we go. And then we've got super. And I had to like, <laughs> that's a super long stamp block for that word super. But I was trying to get them all onto stamp blocks beforehand so that's what I was left with <laughs> so that they were all they all had a place and then the last one is the happy birthday so I'll just ink that one up as well there we go and stamp that there now it doesn't have to be happy birthday um, I just chose to do this because shh, it's gonna be for Julia's birthday getting it done a little early 
because her birthday is not until August. <laughs> so, but that's okay. That's better early than late. All right. So we've now stamped up these and we can go ahead and attach them to our strips. Now I did not put the adhesive on these ahead of time because I didn't want the adhesive to affect my stamping. So I will quickly go ahead and do that. Flip them all over. It's like making pancakes. Flip them all over. <laughs> Add some adhesive down the row. I don't know how much the adhesive would have made a difference, but I figured I'd wait. Only takes a second. All right, and it really doesn't matter what order I put these in. It really has no, makes no difference. I just need to get them on there because it's just one word and you're gonna see it from all different sides. So there we've got super, and then we've got the next one, which is happy birthday. It's your birthday. Happy birthday. We're going to work our way across here. Happy birthday. And then our next one. Look how colorful this is. Oh my goodness. This is so exciting. And a card like this makes kind of a cool decoration too. <laughs> if you did this for Christmas, wouldn't that be fun? And because um, you can display it. You have to be a little bit creative with the display, which is why I was thinking I would I would show you my idea to make it more of a display item. Um, but I didn't have the, the piece that I needed for that. Okay, so we've got our four strips ready. We're gonna scooch them aside again. And now I'm going to bring in the base for the card. And this card is going to end up being six and a quarter inches square. So I have six and a quarter inch square black cardstock. And then I layered it on top with a six and one eighth inch square candy apple cardstock. So it's just got that tiny little bit of black showing around the edge. And then I've also got a piece of the gorgeous black and white checkerboard from the Fresh Paint Collection. And this one is cut as a six by six. Okay, but I haven't attached it yet. I went ahead and adhered these two together, but this one we need to flip it over and we need to put it um, in the center of our mat. So it's a six by six, so it should line up right in the center with three inches all the way around. Okay, and then what we need to do is we need to take, and I flipped it over, so this is the back side of the pattern paper. So whatever pattern paper you want, at the base of your card, you're going to flip it over and then you're going to take your strips of the cards that we've decorated and you're going to apply adhesive on the square right here. So let me just do that. I'm going to put a few pieces. You know what? I might as well put adhesive on all of them while I'm doing this. So let's get them all out, put them away, get them out, put them away, get them out. <laughs> it's just like washing dishes. And the cycle continues. We're doing laundry. <laughs> there we go. And I'm putting a decent amount of adhesive on here because I don't want anything to come apart. Nothing worse than a card that falls apart. And in fact, for some of it, I'm using the red tape this um, super, super sticky red adhesive tape. But for this, I'll just use this. I think it'll be okay. It's gonna get sandwiched. So it should be good. All right, so there we go. Now, and again, it doesn't matter what order I'm putting this in. If it does matter because of how you did your sentiments, then you'll want to pay attention. But mine does not matter because my sentiments are all random. Right, we've got super, we've got rad, we've got um, epic, and then we've got happy birthday. So it doesn't matter what order they're in. 
and all of my designs are the same all the way around or close enough. All right, so now what I want to do is I need to take my two inch square and I'm going to find the two inches that are in the center because we have six inches and so my two inch in the center is right here and I'm going to line it up so that that whole two inch square is going to end up on my card. So what I want to do is I want to line, before I stick it down, if you'll notice, I'm holding this up in the air. I'm going to line it up so that my edges follow the Versamat lines and I don't want, um, I don't want the crease to be right on the edge because this is going to have to wrap around. So once I'm happy with where it is, I'm going to stick it down. And then I'm going to lift it up just to show you. So you see how Oh, I did it backwards? No, no. Yes, I did. I did it backwards. Oh, no. <laughs> do, 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 do. We'll just peel it off. Look at how nicely that came off. And it's okay that there's adhesive there. It won't be the end of the world. But we're going to have to put adhesive on the back. Like this. So these other ones I can do this before I take the adhesive off the other side. <laughs> Gotta love it when somebody gives you the instructions on how to do it wrong. Does that ever happen to you? You put the glue on the wrong side? Oh my gosh, if I had a penny for every time I put glue on the wrong side of a piece of paper, I tell ya. Okay, so this time we want the picture looking up at us. <laughs> And we'll put this back in the center so we've got three inches all the way around the outside. We're going to now do the same thing. We're going to line it up so it's two inches in the center and make sure that our crease is, on, um, is not right on the edge. We want it a little bit towards the pictures so that we can wrap it around. And now I have to be careful I don't stick that down. But now you can see, this is what we want. We want our pictures to show to the edge like that. Okay. <laughs> oh, I gotta love it. So make sure your design is showing up when your thing is flipped over upside down. That is the trick. All right, line it back up. And so that means I now need to go ahead and stick adhesive on the back. Do, 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 do. Fabulous. And then I can peel it off and I'll just leave that other side with the backing on until I'm ready to stick some more things together because there is something that's going to be stuck on there so the adhesive is not going to waste. It's all good. I'm going to scooch those. Okay. In the center. You always got to double check to make sure it hasn't shifted while you did all that. Okay. And then we're going to make sure that this gluey part sticks up in the air while we line it up at the two inch from the top and two inch from the bottom. Line it up. Make sure it's straight. And our pictures are showing up because we got it right this time. Now we need to... Add some more adhesive under here, like this. There we go. Oh, my video has stopped. <laughs> there we go. All right, peeling off the adhesive. You guys are like, geez, this is taking a long time. You told us it was going to be quick. <laughs> It'd be quicker if I didn't make mistakes. Okay, lining it up. And again, we want to line it up on the Versamat so we're nice and square. And then we're going to make sure we don't stick our sticky bit down. We're going to line it up like so and stick her down. And then the last one. This is going to be exciting. 
I think Julia's going to like her card. Because <laughs> it's pretty splashy already. There we go. Oh, I went off the edge with my adhesive. Look at that. I'll just fold it back. Okay. And then the last one. i got to move my chair back so I can get this one on. Line it up. Because it'll work the best if everything's straight. We're going to hold the sticky bit up. And line it up on the Versamat. And then stick it down. Lovely. Okay. Now we want to remove all of our backings. Like this. And we're going to add even more. <laughs> Because now we're going to have to stick this whole thing down to that black and red uh, candy apple cardstock base that we made. So this is the part that will be so slightly fiddly because we're going to have all of these little strippies that are going to be dangling and wanting to get in the way. There we go. And then we need some adhesive in the corners as well. See, this is the part that would have been easier if I didn't have already adhesive on the wrong side of these. <laughs> because I could just go straight across from side to side. Just one big, one big strip. But that's okay. We'll get there. We know it's not coming apart, right? We're not going to have any worries about our card falling apart. There we go. Take off the backings. Do, 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 do. The hardest part is done already, just so you know. And it's not that hard if you actually do it the right way the first time. <laughs> I have to laugh at myself, right? You know, you're demonstrating something and you show it how to do it wrong. <laughs> All right, here we go. Almost there. I should have used liquid glue for this part. There we go. Two more. It's like aerobics. Two more. One more. And stop. <laughs> okay, so here is our base. We're going to put that down there like that. And now the trick is to line this one up. So I'm actually going to kind of try and fold in all of our little flappy bits here or at least some of them so I can see where the edge is because there's only just a little one-eighth of an inch of the red showing so let's see if we can get that lined up basically if we get it on there we're good <laughs> and then stick it down nice I managed to have red showing all the way around I'm so happy with myself Okay, our next pieces that we need, we need two um, pieces of cardstock that are seven eighths by three and a quarter. So seven eighths by three and a quarter. And this time, we're going to scooch this over. We're going to use the Versamat again as our guide. So let me just, there we go. Okay. So we're going to start in the center. And so this is three, this is where I have to do math, three and a quarter. So we've got one and a half, sorry, one and a half and a, and a bit. And then right there. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to line it up so it's exactly in the center of the vertical part. And then I'm going to take the other one. And this is where I've used some red tape. I don't know if you can see it there, but I've got a couple little strips of the red tape. And I'm going to take this now, and I'm going to make it um, perpendicular and crisscrossed with the other one. So I'm going to flip it over, and I'm going to line this one up now at one and a half and an eighth. And there. And... Hope that nothing moved. That's not right. 
<laughs> Red tape, release. I went too far down. Look at that. I didn't go in the center. Here I am saying I need to make sure I go in the center. I wasn't looking at the at the dark line for the center. So one and a half and an eighth. And there we go. There. Now it's in the center. And then on the top of each of these, I've applied um, a half inch worth of the red tape. So I've just got a couple little quarter inch strips on all the sides because this is the mechanism that's going to make the top all come together. So we've got our four little groups of accordions and this piece is going to go just underneath each of the top pieces like this. Oops, that's the second piece. Okay, so it's just going to go under there like that. And we're going to try and line it up and make sure it's all nice and straight. Right? And one nice thing is I actually have um, <laughs> checkerboard under here. So I kind of like how it's sitting right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start kind of lifting and then peeling off my red tape backing. And hopefully it will cooperate with me. not going to. Sometimes you can use your pokey tool for this and that helps. This one's a little awkward because I actually overlapped the red tape by accident. Do, 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 do. Talk amongst yourselves. Okay so now I can take and I can fold this top one over so now that one is attached and now I'm going to go to the opposite side and I'm going to remove the backing. So again, it's just the very top one that's getting attached to the to the center crisscross. A little plus sign. Part of the difficulty I have is that my fingers just don't want to bend to grip it. So there we go. Like that. And I'm going to spin this because that'll be easier for me. So now we're going back to this side and remove the backing of our sturdy sticky tape. Do da do da. Kimberly's not here. <laughs> if Kimberly was here, we'd have some music. Okay, and put that one down. And then the last one. And again, you could use liquid glue for this. But if you use liquid glue, then you have to wait. And I'm not patient. You know this. And so I want to play with it right away and show you how it works. And so if I put liquid glue on here, I'd run the risk of it not working and getting damaged. Okay, so now you can see all four of our things. so fun. Um, are all attached together. And now this is the part that's called the pull-up because you lift up from here and then you can see what it does and it displays all of those fun um, decorations that you've added to the sides. Okay, but we're not quite done because we still have to add a little bit. The first thing we need to do is we need two um, black cardstock circles and I cut these with my second uh, smallest um, circle die and that's one and a half inches so you could use a punch for that too and then I use the smallest one to create one red one so we need two one and a half inches and one one inch circle one of them I have all loaded up with red tape lots and lots of red tape on here um, the other two I haven't even bothered putting any adhesive on and I've punched them in the center. I was looking for my little punch <laughs> and yeah, couldn't find it. And so I am stuck with, with no punch, <laughs> but that's okay. So what I want to do now is I'm going to, actually I should have done this too. 
I should have probably punched through this. So that's what I'm going to do now. Let me just line that up. Grab my punch. And I'm going to punch, hopefully, if you have a crocodile, you can probably get it in there better. Through the center of these. Hopefully it's in the center. I don't know if this is going to reach. There it goes. There it goes. Punch. Nice. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a little bit of white ribbon. This is about seven inches of ribbon and I've um, kind of tapered the end of it so that it'll go through the hole. Easy peasy. Of course every time I say easy peasy it's not so easy peasy. So now we've got it going through. We've got a little loop on top and we can kind of flip it over and this is where you're not really going to see what's happening. So I've got it flipped over and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off all of the backing of my red tape. So basically I adhesived this whole thing. If you had a Xyron and you had really good sticker stuff in there that would hold, you could do this. And what this is doing is it's going to tie down the ends of our ribbon without having to tie a knot. I'm going to just see if I can show you this. But you can see how the ends of the ribbon are coming up through. I hope you can see that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of open up my ribbon. So some of the ribbon is going one way and some of the ribbon is going the other way. Like a brad, like you would open up a brad and make sure it's not hanging over the edge too far. Back it up just a little bit. This is a fiddly part, I must say. Open it up like a brad, and then I'm going to stick this circle, hopefully lining it up with the circle on the top. Do, 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 do. Oh, not bad. Okay, I'm going to squish it down so I can give it some pressure. And there we go. There is our little pull for our pull-up accordion part. And that is the last detail we need to do on it, is just that puller. So let me tip it sideways so you can see. So when it's closed, it's like this. And then as you pull up on the tab, you get that wonderful display, super epic, rad, happy birthday. Maybe I'll pull it this way <laughs> so it's not sideways for you. Isn't that fun? I think that is really super sweet. And you know what? Who wouldn't love to get that? Now, my idea. I wonder if I have something I can kind of demonstrate it with. Okay, I will use this. So my idea is, if you wanted to use this as a display, if you wanted it to be like a centerpiece or something, you could take a piece of tubing. Um, paper towel tubing, but even better than that is like the ones you get in um, like plastic wrap. They're a little bit smaller than, than a paper towel tube, so it would fit nicely under this circle. And then if you wrap some, you know, fancy paper around it, and then you could take it and stick it in the center like this, and then that would hold up your display, and you could cut it to the size you wanted. So I'm just using my acrylic block to hold it up. <laughs> but wouldn't that be cute? And then you have all this crinkly stuff coming, even if you weren't going to um, have it so it could be pulled up, but you were using it as a split as a display. You could add some of those um, foily, sparkly stars and things coming out the top for an extra little bit of something, or even cut out some um, stars and have some little wires or acetates holding them on there. I think that would be super cute. So I thought I would just share that extra little idea. If you did it at Christmas time, it can almost look like a little tree. <laughs> but anyway, it folds right down like this and you can stick it in a six by, sorry, six and a quarter by six and a quarter envelope or a six and a half inch square envelope. Um, or if you don't want to worry about weird postage, get a rectangular envelope that fits. And how fun is that? I hope you guys enjoyed the 
pull up accordion card. I think that's super fun and I know Julie is going to love it and she'll probably actually hang it up in her room somewhere when she gets it for her birthday. All right. Have a wonderful evening. Happy Wednesday to everybody. I hope you enjoyed that and we will see you soon. Toodaloo. Bye.